Okay, so if you all remember, and I know I got a lot of new subs lately, so I'm going to go over this again for everyone that's new. Um, last week I made a few, or actually a couple filings regarding the DTC and the FICC and the NSCC relating to market disruption events and other changes. Now, similar to the wind down and recovery plan, we, we saw it's very similar, actually it's almost the exact same for the FICC, the NSCC, and the DTC. Um, this was all last week. Now, we we got a federal release today, meaning that we can expect 45 days from tomorrow, when this is published on the register, that it will be either approved, disapproved, or designation for a longer period. Now, what this rule pertains to, it was filed on June 25th, uh, posted to the NSCC website on July 7th, still awaiting publication in the Fed Register. We can go ahead and mark that out because as of today, that's no longer the case. So we can go ahead and mark that out and we can put showed up on register for publish dated 7-13-21. So I believe that puts the implementation date uh, or the approval date right around when the CAT system is supposed to take over the old um, audit trail system, the OATS system. So basically, um, it's still in the proposal stage. Um, now since we did get the public inspection, we can expect 45 days from tomorrow, the 13th. Now what this is going to do, it's, it's, uh, I think it's kind of like going along with that cybersecurity narrative. Um, they have four main purposes. Basically one, they're trying to uh, revise certain provisions in the rules relating to confidentiality of information furnished by participants to the NSCC and they also are going to require that each participant maintain those conf uh, confidential information documents for a minimum of two years or, or uh, yes, yeah, two, a minimum of two years and then an extra year on top of that uh, where they still have to keep it on record so three years total three they're gonna add certain officers who are allowed to determine that there is a market disruption event pursuant to rule 60 um, now basically this is the same across the board NSCC DTC and FICC all are doing the same thing they're all re restructuring their confidentiality and they're all uh, requiring everyone to maintain their uh, their documents in a safe place for up to three years now on top of that the reason why they're doing it is they're consolidating jurisdiction into one place giving one streamlined method for jurisdiction in the event that some crazy cyber attack happens or there's a market disruption event. Fourth, they're going to add a new rule, 60A, to address the situations in which it is necessary to disconnect a member, limited member, third party service provider or service bureau due to an imminent threat of harm to NSCC mem members, limited members, and or other market participants. And again, this is similar to these two filings, which were also uh, put on the register today. So very similar time frames for all three of these. We should see them all get approved around the same time. Now the changes, according to this filing, NSCC believes that it is unnecessarily burdensome to determine the rules and regulations of each of the regulatory bodies um, that regulate its participants. So again, what I was saying earlier, NSCC proposes revising the language to basically maintain one confidentiality standard for all participants. The proposed rule change would allow would add two senior executive officers of NSCC, and in this context, we can also include DTC and FICC. Each uh, subsidiary is going to be getting two senior executives to be added to the uh, head of clearing agency services to make decisions in the event that the board cannot in a market disruption event. Now, how they're going to do this is through the force majeure rule, which uh, the market disruption event due to the proposed change the chief information officer and the head of clearing agency services could make such determination of a market disruption event if the board of directors is unable to convene using the force majeure rule now, all that's saying is that if the board cannot convene and whatever's going on in the market that's causing this event that the board members can use the force majeure rule which refers to a clause that is included in contracts to remove liability for natural and unavoidable catastrophes like you know these stocks actually being at the right price to interrupt the expected course of events and prevent participants from fulfilling obligations now rule 60a that they're going to be adding in um, basically it's a new rule called systems disconnect threat of significant impact to the corporation systems and the rule would allow 
uh, would address situations in which NSCC determines it is necessary for NSCC to disconnect a single or limited number of members, limited members, or third-party service providers, or service bureaus used by members or limited members to connect to NSCC. And to give you an example of some members, um, made, you know, banks, clearing houses, things like that. There, it's a very, very long list. Now, in essence, very similar to the wind down and recovery because we saw the same filing come out for the DTC and the FICC as well. And basically, they're trying to accomplish four things. Number one, consolidate jurisdiction. Number two, each company is adding two top executives to make key decisions and shutting down services in the event of a market disruption event. Three, each company is requiring that confidential information be kept safe for at least three years or enforcement action will be taken. And then it also adds a new rule 60A, which outlines uh, strategies that will come into play for NSCC and remove any liability from the event resulting from a system disconnect or some kind of imminent threat like a cybersecurity attack on the company. Also, same four objectives for DTC as well as FICC. So I hope that I uh, cleared it up for you all. Um, in, in ape speak, um, uh, Federal Register document going to be published tomorrow. 45 days from that date, we will see an approval decision as far as the filing itself, meanings, more ass covering, cybersecurity related narrative, in my opinion, unavoidable event foreshadowed, limited liability for each major company in the event that that unavoidable event happens. In other words, Moas, baby, let's go. I got some more filings to talk about.